one question which uh, which is relevant is how do you prepare for the stress before the show being knowing that you might get stressed and you might forget some of the things which you have to say during the show so what would be your advice how how can we prepare better for that ah uh, stress management <laughs> <laughs> well first of all i will i will acknowledge that even i feel stress before just before this show started i had a little bit of because i care i want to do well everybody wants to do well you want to come across as an expert. You don't want anybody to find out that you don't know something, especially if you're being portrayed as an expert. However, when you get a hard question that maybe you don't know the answer to, how you handle that matters more than whether you know the answer or not. I'll repeat that. Being under control, cool under pressure, is more important than what you say. So. If you get the curveball question, that's a, a true surprise that you don't know the answer to. There's a few different techniques that you can use to get out of that situation, <laughs> meaning gracefully get out of it. If you're on our panel, you're like, well, I don't have uh, my fingertips on that data, but does anybody else here have the answer? <laughs> I used to do that in meetings all the time, uh, in corporate meetings, and someone would say, well, yeah, I think I know, or I have it right here, or let me chat to somebody and, and get it for you. Real time. All right. Good. So I, I got that tool I can use. You can also paraphrase the question. This is another way to buy yourself a little time. And when the hard question comes, uh, say, for example, someone say, hey, what makes you think you can do this now when you failed so much in the past? You're like, well, it's like an accusatory. Uh, Someone's calling me a liar. It's like it, it feels like, ooh, emotional reaction. What a lot of people do is use this cliche. I think you know what I'm about to say. What's the most common cliche people use to buy time before answering a question? Eva's smiling. She knows what it is. And people say, hey, great question. That's a great question. Great question. Great question. <laughs> After every question, you've probably heard it today. And I'm sorry if I'm putting anybody on blast, but it's a common time buying mechanism to say, hey, that's a great question. And while you're saying that, your wheels are turning and you have an answer. So a different way, different technique to answer that to make you appear more thoughtful and also to get some clarification. It's a paraphrase. Three parts of a paraphrase. Setup. Uh, let me make sure I hear what you're asking. Then the paraphrase itself, which is you're asking, uh, why you think our team's not going to be able to perform because we don't have any more resources than we had last year? Is that what you're asking? Right? So set up, paraphrase. I add a little bit of a because in there because I think that's the question behind the question. And I say, is that correct? And I wait for it. Wait for it. Yes. Okay. And even if they say no, like if you guessed wrong, you still win because they're gonna start clarifying and buying you even more time. So in that time, it makes you appear thoughtful, uh, empathetic, and, and you just really care about making sure you give them a good answer and you're not just gonna start talking and, and hope something good comes out because we hear a lot of that too, especially in corporate meetings. Uh, so those are a couple of techniques, even just the, the paraphrase or asking someone else or promising to get the information later. Those are all things you can do when you get in those tough spots. So to circle back to your question, Eva, whoever the question was, feeling anxiety usually comes from the fear of those things happening. We don't want to be found out. We don't want to bomb on a big stage. And, and so if you know you have those techniques to use, that can give you a little more comfort. It's like when I was learning how to ski and I'm like doing the bunny hill thing, you know, going really slow back and forth with the snow plow. And, and my friend was... A, advanced skier he goes david just just point your skis downhill and go i'm like no i don't know how to stop <laughs> right so but once i learned how to stop I'm like i got the courage to dive in a little bit more so learn some of these skills work with a coach i do coaching on this there's other coaches out there practice on some of the techniques there is actually a skill set you can learn that'll help you uh, be better in those tough situations